Hey, what do do, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a good Labor Day weekend. Uh, as far as I go, I pretty much have been working all weekend, with the exception of Sunday. Uh, I usually try to take it easy on Sundays. So this was a big weekend for my daughter back here. She uh, she graduated from her little Yamaha 50 to the XR70. And I'm gonna ride it. As you can see, I have my helmet. <laughs> So we are headed up to the front of the property. We're gonna go start up the 70. She's gonna ride it around. Wow! So we got some big news. Uh, I am gonna be selling my K30. A lot of you have probably seen that truck rolling around in the background occasionally. Uh, she's been a good truck, but I honestly, I don't drive it near as much as I should. And it's kind of sad to see it just sitting there. And then maybe later on down the road, I'll find something to replace it with. So it's kind of a sad day, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys that truck, all the ins and outs. I'm gonna get it cleaned up, gonna get it ready to sell. And uh, we're going to have some other odds and ends in this video. What are you doing? <laughs> and I hope you guys enjoy Let's go ahead and jump on into it. Let's roll. Are right, you ready? All right. So yesterday she was ripping around not thinking all of a sudden I hear a click in the second and she just goes flying by. These are those proud dad moments. <laughs> You got the Midas touch. She's kind of dirty. She's kind of dirty. She's been sitting for a while. Looks like a animal made its home right there. Along with some jumper cables and see if we can get it going. One thing that we did find in here while we're cleaning all this stuff out is two new Milwaukee sets. One's like the nut drivers and then the other one's just like the standard shockwave Phillips bits and stuff like that. But still, good find. This right here is my beautiful K30 Cummins swapped 12 valve P-pump conversion. Uh, I'll go into a little bit about what's on that engine in a little bit. That thing is pretty built. Um, but it's a crew cab, 4x4. It's got a CM flatbed. It's still kind of dirty. I just pressure washed it yesterday, but I am going to start cleaning this thing. I was talking to Ryan about it, you know, on the fence, like, because it really is a cool truck, but I just don't use it. I'm honestly on the fence on whether I should keep this truck and get rid of that one or keep this one and get rid of that one. Uh, that one's like a super good truck, super comfortable, super reliable. Thing tows like a beast, but. This truck is super one of a kind. So drop it down in the comments below what you guys would do if you were getting rid of a truck. Regardless, I'm gonna get rid of one of them just because I don't need both of them right now. And I got too many projects and eventually I could build this one again or get another truck again, I'm not sure. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys this truck a little bit and uh, we'll see how you guys like it. All right, so it's vacuumed enough. It's not perfect, but it's gonna have to show you guys. So I bought an old Suburban specifically just for the interior because the Suburbans more often than not had the two captain chairs and this is the kicker. This is something that you will almost never find in a crew cab Chevy. Is this guy right here. So it has the roof center console. Now this is only in the very late model Suburbans. So I took it out of the Suburban, I painted it to match the truck and then it's got all the storage, the lights, they're kind of dim, but they actually work. And so everything about this is functional. I did replace these with like newer LED bulbs. When you open the door, these lights turn on. You got storage up here for whatever you want to put, maybe a garage door opener. But this is something that you will almost never find inside a crew cab Chevy. So it does just have like a generic center console from LMC truck. Um, the existing console from the Suburban was missing stuff and it was blue and it just didn't work out very well. So it's got a bench in the back seat. There is a, I think it's a 10 inch subwoofer underneath the seat. So another thing that's cool about this truck is it does have the power locks and the power windows, but it did not originally have them. And so on the Suburban, when I took everything off, let me show you guys something real quick. I pulled out the actual passage hinge, right? Well, where is it? Right there. So the wires actually run through. There's no exposed wires. And I did put like some nice speakers and tweeters inside the door. So here's another thing that you will probably never ever find in a crew cab Chevy like this. Ah, uh, well at least it's not very possible because I have the gauge cluster out of an old Top Kick or Kodiak and check this out. So on this you have the tachometer which is not hooked up yet, but you have your fuel gauge down there. So you have a tach and fuel gauge. You have your speedometer. And then over here you have an air gauge which is something that none of these trucks will ever have. And it's actually hooked up to my onboard air compressor. So check this out. 
So you guys saw those two needles move, and um, the reason that's cool is because if you guys have like a weird load that's on the flatbed, like let's say one side's heavier than the other, you can air up this side more than this side, and it just tells you how much pressure is in both sides of the bag. So just something cool that probably no other crew cab's ever gonna have. So inside this guy right here, you have your compressor, your air tank, you got the pump for the snow kit. Uh, there's your regulator or whatever it is. Snow kit tank storage i built this guy this was not part of this so then you have your fuel right here i did put a mid mounted much larger tank in the middle of this instead of the two side mounted because i don't like side mounted tanks so it's got airlift airbags uh works super good um i built those traction bars they turned out pretty good it's pretty dirty right now but the transfer case does have some shiny stuff on it it does have a disc brake on the drive shaft. I'll explain that one in a little bit. It does have the four inch exhaust brake, which is super sweet. Then it's got a gauge cluster that I made that turned out pretty good. I tried to texture it the best I could so it would look like the rest of the truck. Um, you guys can see it did crack a little bit up here, but you know, you guys could fix that. So a couple other cool things we got going for. I'm not sure how clean it is back here, but we'll see. It does have Amp there, amp there, um, mounted to this board that I made. It is covered. Turned out pretty clean, just needs to be dusted down and cleaned up a little bit. Probably could use a capacitor. I had this rear window tinted. I tried to do it myself and I failed, so they did a pretty good job. Um, does have a strung out sticker on it, which is probably my favorite band. If you guys have never heard of them, you should probably check them out. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire this thing up for you guys so you guys can hear it. This is probably one of the baddest sounding 12 valves. I would say in the San Diego area. I just love the way this truck sounds. And which is probably the coolest thing about it is it's got a Cummins engine in it. All right, push that clutch in. All right, well, let me get this camera set up to where I can uh, rev it up for you guys a little bit. guys see she just sounds wicked I mean she's a mean sounding truck I love it I did switch out the hubs which were automatic for the, the actual locking hubs so I'm not a big fan of the automatic ones uh, longer brake lines it does need new shocks and now it's time for the most important part guys the Cummins I'm gonna show you guys what I got done to this beast so we have the AFE turbo I don't remember the sizes on it but much larger four inch outlet heat wrapped the downpipe because it is so close to the engine wall the AC on this truck actually does work. I plumbed it all up so it would work. Um, it does have a much larger Wilson uh, alternator, internally regulated instead of the external regulators that the old 12 valve Cummins had. I did put different crankcase breathers on the top of this truck. It's a special valve cover that's specially made for this, just to kind of help not leak so much oil that the old 12 valves typically leak through the old crankcase breathers that are down there. Did do a P-pump conversion because this is originally an 89 block. So this has the 191 delivery valves, 4K governor spring, extended rack plug. It does have pretty much a garden hose that fuels this thing. Uh, I think that's it as far as the P-pump goes. It's got the Banks twin ram. Now I know a lot of people be like, oh, that doesn't add horsepower, but I think it looks cool. Um, I did put the Hydro Boost brake kit on this truck, uh, which is what the K30s had. It's a little bit more heavy duty. It's not vacuum assisted. And so because of that, I had to put on a different power steering pump that has uh, increased output to accommodate the Hydro Boost Brake System. Uh, the head was poured and polished by yours truly. It's got, I think it's made by BD Power, I don't remember, three-piece manifold with the T4 outlet, much larger outlet than the T3. Uh, I don't remember what size injectors, I think they're stage three, they're big. So another thing that I did on this truck that typically most square bodies don't have is a battery on this side and a battery on this side. So I was able to get a passenger side battery. Um, it's not like an aftermarket piece. I got the actual 
battery tray so it looks completely factory this one looks completely factory this is where the snow kit comes in I know I didn't show you guys that but I love this light setup on all the square bodies more so than the ones that are here here just the big single light um, I really like the two smaller lights up top and the blinkers down here just looks pretty good it does have the cab lights up top it's got the stacks but I don't know guys I don't know I think I'm gonna cry a little bit this truck is just like unique one of a kind is it perfect no does it have a ton of work done to it yes is it my favorite truck by far um, the paint could use some love um, the clear coats definitely peeling um, needs a good wash but the cab is like super rust free the pillars are not like falling apart at all it's a super California truck so all in all there's a total of one two three four there were five trucks they got sacrificed to build this truck. So, coolest truck I've ever had by far. Um, let me know what you guys think. I'm honestly contemplating going back to this being my daily driver and sending that off to somewhere else and selling it. So I got a piece of glass that's in this box right here. And if you guys follow Ryan's channel, you remember like a couple months, I don't remember how long ago it was. It wasn't in a huge rush to get it fixed. But on this skid steer right here, um, the glass broke on it. And uh, there's a couple things that I'll cheap out on, glass being one of them, because glass is glass and you know it does what it does, it breaks. And so typically I'll try to find like cheaper replacement panels of glass, but nobody makes glass panels that fit in here. So we ended up having to buy the actual cap part for it, which isn't a big deal, I'm gonna put it in today. Get the front door put back on, get this thing pulled out, get it washed up. Love this Ultra Cab. <laughs> this is such an awkward box. I think it's way bigger than it needs to be. It's even got like wood on it. But keep the glass safe, I guess. All right, let's see if we can get a little sneak peek in there. Mm, not yet. Now I know why this thing was so expensive. It's got like the aluminum rails already in it. Uh, that's gonna make my brother happy because he took it apart and he said it was a pain to get all this stuff off. So hopefully it's easy to put back together. All right, let's see if I can get this in the trash without destroying my fingers. There we go. Uh, I guess we don't need that anymore. So I was trying to suck it out with the vacuum, and it was doing okay, but down in that corner down there, I'm just going to get to it. So I, I got one of these Venturi-style blowguns. These things are just insane on how much air they blow. So I was able to get all the air out with this. Now we're going to slide that window down, and... Get the sync button back up. All right, so after this window's in, you just gotta put like a screw here, screw here, that pretty much holds it in place. I did have to take off this bracket, which was this little guy right here. First to slide down, but now all I gotta do is put this gasket back in. Like so. All right, so we got three truckloads of mulch because we got a lot of work coming up that we're gonna need all this mulch for. But I'm not gonna show you guys yet because we don't have the stuff that it's gonna be used for. We just uh, take advantage of those trips to the landfill. All right guys, so it's getting late. It's almost uh, 9.30 and I uh, appreciate you guys for taking time to watch. If you do me a huge solid like, subscribe, share this video with your amigos, hit that notification button so you guys continue to see everything we got going on. I gotta go out in the dump trucks tomorrow. We got quite a bit of stuff we gotta get done, but I uh, will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.